Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Uh, we are coming at you on October 16th, 2020, with a smack in the middle of election season. So we got all that craziness going on and we're still in the middle of a lot of COVID lockdown uh, nonsense as well. Uh, so. Uh, before we get into the show, let me introduce you to our panel. Uh, this in the middle is Leon, the word Brathwaite. Oh, excuse me, move to the upper hand corner. <laughs> Just that uh, was Leon, the word Brathwaite, last week, Liberty. Uh, and he is a retired engineer from the state of California. And now, uh, we have uh, Tim Everett, our Eagle Freedom. He is a pilot in the state of California. And with that, uh, let's jump right into the topics. So it's, uh, oh, and then my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. As far as the topics go, uh, it, we, we, it, it's just crazy, really, 2020, uh, as far as the lockdown that we've been talking about. And one of the most striking things we've seen is something almost out of a third world country. About a week ago, uh, a plot was foiled uh, to uh, on the kidnapping of uh of minnesota governor whitmer michigan so, michigan oh michigan michigan governor whitmer yes uh and um and apparently it was some uh i guess a militia group that uh i guess was sort of at the heart of this and it's, it's you may or may not know uh, uh governor whitmer is one of the more um active in these lockdown uh type of strategies where essentially you know she'll you know, fine you or throw you in jail for cutting hair or any one of a number of things. In fact, the crazy things they had there was you could go, I remember at one point, to a store like Home Depot and you could buy certain things, but other things they had you couldn't buy. <laughs> things yeah. like dark supply and yeah. other things. So, I mean, the stuff was there and the store was open. You just literally couldn't buy it because she didn't feel that was appropriate. So, <laughs> I mean, some of these, uh, uh, you know, things were kind of heavy handed. But anyways... Uh, apparently, a group has gotten fed up, I guess, and they wound up trying to uh, patch a plot to kidnap her. And I'm not sure where it was supposed to go from there, but I guess the FBI and some state police broke it up. And those people like are sitting in jail at this point. I don't know if we know the complete motive, but I think there's a lot to, have to do with the heavy-handed lockdown uh, going on in uh, in Michigan. Do you guys have uh, any thoughts you guys want to get in on, to on this one? I mean, obviously, obviously, these guys are a bunch of crazy, crazy, um, I don't know, militia types. Uh, they say far right in the in the media. You know, they 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 allow to anything like this will always be characterized as far right. But the thing that is interesting about this story, I mean, okay, fine, these guys tried to do an awful thing. They got they got arrested. I hope they spent a long time in prison trying to trying to do this. Okay, but this this woman. Gretchen, Gretchen um, Whitmer, she's a one crazy governor. It's unbelievable. I doesn't that doesn't mean she deserve anything that that these guys were contemplating for her, but that woman is crazy. She's acting like a little petty dictator from a third world nation. You you just raised one example. A store is open, they have stuff, but they can't buy it because Governor Whitmer say you can't. This is just crazy stuff. But what is worst about all of this? Now the media comes up now and saying it's Trump rhetoric that is causing these kind of problems. It is Trump that is motivating these people. So in the last debate, Donald Trump made a very idiotic statement, okay? Chris Wallace had said, oh, you should be condemning these white supremacists, blah, 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 and all sort of things. And the, Trump said something about, okay, stand, stand down or stand and stand by. It was idiotic. You know Donald Trump. He's famous for making idiotic statements. Now they have taken that. Now they have taken that, and now they're saying those words were the rallying cry of Donald Trump to the white supremacists, and that is why all of this came along, and that is why these people were going out to do this sort of thing. But if Donald Trump really wanted to harm Governor Whit uh, Whitmer, it was very easy. He could have tell the FBI not to, not, not to prosecute, not to, not to fine and, and, and do anything to these people. He could have let them go ahead and do what they were going to do if he was really that cynical and that that nefarious in his, in, his, in his intent. But these crazy people in the media always want to tell us 
is strong sword. A pin could drop in the back of nowhere and stick a little child and a show is going to be Donald Trump's fault. And this is the craziness that's going on in America today. Yeah, I can't add to that about the Trump <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's uh, disheartening. Um, the level of, uh, of this kind of uh, thing going on in the campaign na campaigns now, but you know, it's always been something similar. It's just that Donald Trump has a tendency to give uh, the opposition a lot of ammunition that yeah. in the past, you know, that a lot of, uh, you know, uh, more suave and debonair uh, politicians would would not. Yeah. But, you know, but still, you know, does he deserve it? No. Is it all extrapolated nonsense? Yes. But, uh, you know, here we are uh, about the FBI. You know, I. I'm, I'm not saying I have no information about this, but I do know that the FBI has in the past uh, created lots of stings uh, yeah. to uh, kind of entrap people. And so I'm not saying that's what happened uh, here. Uh, it could have could have been, you know, but, but it's a way of them getting their numbers up and they, they like to have success. And and so what better way to do it than than to en entrap somebody in, in something that they concoct on their own and, and uh, you know, get gullible people to come in. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Well, let's do that, you know. So, um, but we'll see. Uh, you know, it's, it's probably much more likely to, to have been totally brought out by these, uh, this militia group, whoever it is, a um, bunch of wacky people. And um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, well, well, you know, point. well, Tim, Tim, you're right. You know, the FBI, have, you know, have done a lot of, a lot of crazy yeah. stuff in the past, and entrapment is one of those crazy stuff they have done. Even this thing about this Russia hoax and that kind of stuff was all started by James Comey and and some of his cohorts oh, with, right. within the yeah. FBI. So it's 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 not out of the realms of possibility that this could have been an entrapment also designed by them. But as far as we know to date. This was something that started within that group, the Wolverine Watchmen, as they are called. That was started solely within them, and they um they were trying to do this nonsense. I heard also yeah. that the um yeah. they were thinking about um kidnapping the governor of um Virginia. Also, they were also thinking yeah. about doing that. So the so look like they were. They were yeah. Do they watch that movie? Um, Red Dawn. <laughs> Red Dawn. Is that, is that where they got that idea? The Wolverines. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> no Wolverines. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny, uh, though, Tim, earlier you mentioned uh, the, the the Trump thing, and, you know, I can't help but thinking every time, you know, with I think uh, Gretchen Whitmer during the, uh, you know, her own uh, press conference on this, I guess she uh, – you know, was thanking the police and the FBI for their work on this. And she was also taking the time, too, to make sure she blamed Trump at the same time for all oh. this. It was, it was kind of funny, though, because she was citing from the debate when Trump, you know, asked about white supremacists and Trump, you know, and then they asked which group and they, I can't remember which group they said, uh, it's Patriot Pride or something like that. I, I don't remember which group it was. Proud, but, proud Boys. Oh, Proud Boys. Proud okay, boys. that's it. Yeah. Okay, so the boys, boys. And, and so then he said, well, he, he, he looked like he almost didn't even know who they were. And he just said, well, uh, you know, stand down and, uh, you know. Stand, 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 stand down and stand by. Stand, stand, down, yeah, stand, stand by. down and stand by. And I mean, it's just, you know, you can't help but think, I mean, Trump, for every shot he takes at the other side, you know, he puts one in his own foot, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 oh, dang. Don't, don't get a, a loaded gun around him. It might have a negligent discharge. You know, yeah. you, you know, you know, this, this, you know what you say is so correct about Donald Trump, okay? During that very same debate, okay, they asked Joe Biden about about um about extremist groups on the left. Joe Biden's response was Antifa is an idea. Now, if Trump hadn't made that ridiculous statement that he made in that debate, that should have been big news. Antifa is burning down parts of California right now as we speak. And he's gonna say Antifa is an idea. But of course, Trump, Trump made the ridiculous statement that becomes the news, and everybody have forgotten that Joe Biden said Antifa is nothing but an idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, there's there's uh, something else too I wanted to bring up on this whole uh, subject too with the Whitmer thing before we leave it, and that's it. Uh, the the uh, the Supreme Court in in uh, Michigan uh, recently ruled that her uh, her gosh, what do they call it? Emergency Management Act is what I guess gives her the executive authority to uh, make a lot of these edicts that she's been doing, you know, and essentially controlling people's lives there. And I I, I guess uh, you know some of the issues they had is that. That, that emergency act is only supposed to be for 30 days, you know, exactly. yeah. and, you know, she's been going on for about five months with it or six months. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. at some point you got to wonder, I mean, our country was founded on people standing up because their freedom was being stepped on. And I, you know, I'm not saying that this particular militia group was, you know, necessarily in the right or if they weren't crazy or anything else, but, you know, we do come from, you know, this whole country was founded on the idea that if a government is overbearing and taking, a, you know, crushing your business, your freedoms, that at some point you stand up. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not I guess I'm not willing to completely condemn these guys right off the bat. I'd like to hear a little bit more about the, the story, but, but it's, uh, you know, I, I just can't help but think, you know, that, you know, it's, you know, we, at what point do people stand up and say, no, they're not going to take it anymore? And what's the proper role to do that? I mean, clearly, clearly the sentiment of standing up for in, against injustice, especially when the injustice is being done by the government. It is vitally important that we as people who believe in liberty and believe in the exercise of those liberties in our freedoms, it is vitally important that we stand up and do something about it. But I think we have to be careful that we don't cross a line into criminal conduct in the process of doing that. And this is where we have all these problems going on. Look at right now with this George Floyd thing. Sure, it was fine for us to stand up against the injustice of the government, We're represented by Derek Chavin. It was fine for us to do that. But when we see the looting and the rioting, that have crossed over into criminal conduct, and it's no longer okay for us to be doing, to be engaging in that kind of activity. So these guys, why their sentiments may be fine, because they were standing up against the, 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 the lockdown, standing up against the dictatorial actions of, of Governor Whitmer. All of that is fine. Those sentiments are fine. We support those sentiments. But they cannot support what they were thinking about doing, which is to kidnap this woman and God knows do, do what to her. No, I, we, we can't go there. Well, I think uh, one of... One of the proper ways to uh, protest, uh, you know, and, and as libertarians, we're, we're worried a lot about, you know, any kind of centralized power. But what we have to remember, too, that these local governments can be just as tyrannical. And, you know, state and county and city governments can be just as tyrannical. And uh, so it's a good thing that they're all uh, that that were protected in, in many uh, ways by the constitution that, that holds them uh, equally accountable for their, uh, their tyrannies, uh, large and small. So um, I think writing our Congress people and senators is, and, and even, you know, in the state, just, you know, sending them emails that, Hey, this, you know, and, and to the, to the governor too. I mean, the governor's office has got somebody who's reading those emails, and uh, you know, hey, this is ridiculous, and so on and so forth. Because most people, liberty-minded, are a little bit too busy because they're working, and they don't have a lot of time to go protest. But a, you know, a peaceful, yeah. a real—I mean, not a mostly peaceful protest, but a 100% peaceful, peaceful protest, protest. Yes. would uh, would also yeah. be. Um, a, a, a way to uh, show a uh, that were that the, whoever was doing it is against whatever policy of uh, tyrannical policy that the government was um, imposing upon them. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of us aren't. You know, we'd have to do it on a Saturday or Sunday, I guess, because we're usually <laughs> more, busy. Well, most of us, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. for us, retired guys, it could be any day of the week, you know. Well, <laughs> well, well, you know, you also have to worry too. I mean, are they going to permit you to protest? Right. I mean, that's right. 
want right. to pray in some of these places, oh. and they won't even permit them to get oh, together that's right. and pray. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, but you know, but you know, talking about this, this peaceful protest and and versus the um, the violence that we are seeing that came from that, those some of those protests. One of the biggest movements, one of the greatest stand against injustice that ever occurred in the history of this country, occurred in the civil rights movement led by Martin Luther King. Yeah. Totally nonviolent. Yeah. Yeah, okay. there's, an, there's though, your best example. Yes, right even though there was so much violence committed against them, especially yeah. the, um, during the summer marches, there were all kinds of beatings and, and all yes. kinds of stuff that right. happened during, during those things. But they remained yeah. nonviolent and they won in the end. We are benefiting yeah. from that today. They won yeah, yeah. in the end. So so we okay. don't have to be we don't have to be violent to get what we need. And I mean, I, I, I am, I've always been against these lockdowns. I think you guys know that. I've said this on this show many times, many, many, many times. But we have to do it nonviolent. Protest, yes, yes. get up there, do whatever we have to, nonviolently. Because the Constitution tells us it's peaceably assemble. Yeah. And that's what we should do. Yep, very good. Well, that'll be the last word on that topic. <laughs> Somebody who never seems to get over the last word, though, is Donald Trump. And uh, one of the things that came up with him recently is uh, uh, this has been going on for a couple of weeks now, but there was a big tax uh, dump that uh, the New York Times did on him where they, they, they didn't actually re release his tax returns, but they released a lot of data from, I guess, his tax returns. So I'm not exactly sure of the... No, they're not revealing their sources, I guess. So, you know, it's uh, hard to know exactly what they got. But regardless, um, you know, the, the scandal, I guess, for the for the left mainly is that uh, you know, apparently he there's some years where he only paid around 750 bucks in tax, apparently. Um, there's some complexity in this, so it's not quite as cut and dry in that, and that apparently he was taking advantage of, um, you know, some uh, ways to defer losses that were set up in a prior administration, I think by a Democratic Congress, I think, you know, so, uh, but uh, it related to the housing uh, bust. But uh, so, I mean, I think he was taking advantage of some of those things, but regardless, um, you know, it's creating quite a scandal for him now as uh, somebody who's kind of, they're labeling as sort of a tax. Uh, Do you guys have, uh, have any thoughts on this particular story? I, th I, I really wish people would uh, not come up with these unnamed sources and the, you know there's it's not uh, definitive and it's data supposedly and you know but you can't can't find out who it came from and so uh you know based on this data we think he probably just paid 750 bucks and you know it's, it's a bunch of nothingness uh in my opinion uh that's all big nothing burger yes you know this has to be one of the most ridiculous stories of this year. First of all, I think those tax returns were illegally obtained based upon uh, uh, the, the New York Times certainly obtained them illegally. But well, they had to have been illegal because it, the person wouldn't have had permission to release them. So I mean, exactly, exactly. Least, least illegally obtained. Illegal. But yeah. leaving that leaving that aside, every single America American who files a return take advantage of something in the tax laws, okay? And unless you are telling me that Donald Trump did something illegal, and if he did, I have no problem in his, in his prosecution, none whatsoever. Unless you are telling me that, then what is the problem? Every one of us take advantage of tax laws. I own, my wife and I own some property. We own our own home that we live in, and we own property. And every legal law, every legal thing that there is in the law, we do it. We take advantage of it. So someday, if I ever decide to run for office, one of these idiots is going to get out there and say, oh, God, Leon and his wife is a bunch of tax cheats because they didn't pay more taxes than they should. Yeah. What do you think? I am an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if the IRS was worried about Donald Trump's tax returns, they, they, would, they have all the information. They have the tax returns. Yeah. Uh, of course well, they do. Yeah. And, so, and he actually claims that he's being audited, which is w the reason why he says he won't release the taxes. I uh, have oh, various opinions okay. upon whether or not he should release them on that. But the, the point is, he's claiming that that's why he won't release his taxes, because he's in the middle of an audit. So. But that, but well, that no, no, I mean, about the releasing of the, I mean, he's not obligated legal to release them. But Trump excuse 
for not releasing his taxes, that that excuse about being audited so he can't release is very idiotic. Okay, believe me, it is. Yeah. Okay? Plus, plus, there's uh, the whole the whole congressional uh, or, or constitutional requirement uh, since the income tax wasn't even uh, law until uh, 1913. Uh, then it's pretty, uh, I think it's pretty apparent to all of us that uh, there is no constitutional requirement for a president to divulge their tax returns. It's like that's that's between the that person running for office or, or holding office and the IRS. And none of us, uh, you know, need to know about it uh, for any reason. I mean, you know, this is just... All this is is just people that hate Donald Trump, and they just say, "Oh my God, he's not giving up his tax returns." You know, it's like that's all it is. It's just that well, they're pissed. Personally, I mean, I, I think that it's it's also, I mean, the voters have a role, and it's up to them to say, "Hey, we're not going to vote for you unless you you uh, show us your returns if that's their value." But they yes. do. Yeah. From without sharing their terms, right? So I mean, you know, I, I I can certainly see voters demanding somebody meet that standard. But if the voters vote for somebody and they don't demand that standard, I mean, that's that's up to the voters, I guess. But uh, well, then again, they're right. But that uh, that's a decision for the voters, not yeah. not for Nancy Pelosi yeah. or or the New York Times or anybody else. That's for us. But you know, one one point I think this should drive home for libertarians, and hopefully we can take advantage of this message is that people who are upset about thinking that whether Trump paid 750 in a certain year or not. The, the true issue here is why the heck is the tax code so complicated that we can't be confident that everybody is paying a share? You know, I mean, whatever that is, if you just have a simple amount, you know, where you say either it's a flat tax or maybe you have some kind of, maybe it's graduated, whatever the strategy is, just keep it simple and don't have all of these little bells and whistles that mm. concentrated interests that are going to government their arm through lobbyists and getting that stuff in there exactly so, i mean exactly. and it makes it so complicated that then we can't have faith that our neighbors are doing their part you know as far as supporting government so you're obviously yeah. not a, a, a certified public accountant <laughs> <laughs> if, if you were you would know the answer to that question <laughs> You know, there, there's one there's one thing I want to jump on to real quick before we go on a uh, before we uh, run out of time on the show. And that's it. We have an issue right now where uh, Biden is, uh, you know, has a scandal. It's been ongoing with Hunter Brown being given money, lots of places. And, you know, and yet, you know, nobody seems to be looking into it. And recently what happened was. The New York Post had a story where they came up with a laptop that was brought in for service to some center. Nobody came by to pick it up. So the guy went through the laptop, was looking to clean it, and he found all these pictures of Hunter Biden and all these emails uh, suggesting, you know, ties to, you know, all these governments and setting up meetings for, you know, to get his, you know, dad's influence. Uh, and, you know, it's... Uh, but the astounding thing of the story, aside from the corruption aspect that we kind of suspected for a while, but is the, the issue that Twitter has blocked the story from the, the New York Post. Uh, exactly. uh, yes. The story. And if anybody sends that story, Twitter blocks them. And then uh, even even other news agencies and, and the New York Post themselves, if they post it on Twitter, they get blocked saying it's a block. Yes. Story. <laughs> so, big so. The Streisand effect, uh, Barbara, Barbara Streisand. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but this is uh, what's happening is the Streisand uh, effect because she had a photographer uh, take a picture of her uh, backyard because there was some erosion going on in the uh, along the whole neighborhood there. And uh, so she raised such a big stink about it that she wanted to block the, the release of this image which had been downloaded like uh, like six or eight times from the internet. It was on the internet, but, and two of the people that downloaded it were her attorneys that downloaded this picture of the back. So she, you know, it's, it's an invasion of privacy. Well, after she sued for this uh, image, then it was uh, downloaded, this is a long time ago, but it was downloaded more than 480,000 times instead of, <laughs> you know, six or seven. So so ever since then, this kind of uh, thing where they, you know, a story comes out, they want to suppress it, whoever they are, and they, they go to 
extremes to try to suppress it. Well, what does that do? It blows it out of oh, all yeah. proportion. Yeah. So that's what's going on here. And so, you know, it's backfiring on Twitter and Facebook for for uh, trying to suppress the story. Now, everybody and his mother is talking about how they try to suppress this story. So, you know, there we go. Uh, sorry, Leon. You, no, no problem. No problem. I, I, I don't want to suppress you guys anymore on this, but uh, we're just out of time. So it's time for a knucklehead. <laughs> we'll jump back to that issue on a upcoming show because there's so much going on with media gaslighting yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, perspectives. But anyways, uh, as, as far as that goes, to tie this all back to the beginning of the show, um, you know, with, with the knucklehead noise patrol, we try and find something that's kind of crazy that somebody said or something recent in the news. This one is not quite so recent, but it ties to the whole Whitmer issue that we talked about in the beginning of the show. She uh, given a uh, lecture, I guess, to her constituents <laughs> at a public press conference uh, for her, and um, uh, she had said while she was, uh, uh, you know, tying them up uh, with different restrictions, she said, uh, "If you're one of those people that's going to Ohio to get a haircut, I hope and pray that you're doing your part to bring COVID, uh, not bring COVID nineteen home." Uh, if you haven't resorted to that, uh, Google how to do a haircut or to throw your hair into a ponytail and get through the next couple of weeks so we can resume these uh, some of these things. Okay, and so, uh, you know, it sounds kind of, you know, okay, so she's telling people to Google for a haircut. Well, in Michigan, they require a license that says you have to get 1,800 hours. <laughs> I'm <laughs> and then here she is telling people, just, just, go, just go Google how to haircut, you know. So, after, yeah. after she locked down, after she locked down all the hair salons and everything and stuff like that, you know, she telling people that cannot now, now she want to have the power to tell them they cannot even go to Ohio to get the haircut. They have to do it here. They have to Google it and figure out how to do it themselves. This is the ridiculousness of arbitrary government. <laughs> Just telling us what our freedoms are and what our freedoms are not. We yeah. got to stop these people. We got really got to. We got to get out there and do something about these kind of mentality of these people who think we are their servants. That's what they think. We are their servants. Well, I guess pick a law to break. Either I'm going to have a non-licensed, unlicensed barber cut my hair, my <laughs> friend or my wife or girlfriend, or I'm going to go to a licensed barber who's uh, un under the table and doing a black market thing. Yeah, um, Pelosi, the right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, you know, Pelosi. So I'm going to break. You know, <laughs> Take take your pick, you know. So it's it's just it's the it's absurd, absurd. That's what it is. We will, well, Tim, we'll have to Pelosi your hair, you know. Yeah. In honor, in honor of Nancy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm tr I'm, I have to fight with my girlfriend to cut my hair because she, you know, she does a great job, but she doesn't want to do it. And you know, oh. it's ill, it's an illegal haircut. I have to admit, she's unlicensed as a barber. <laughs> But it's, it's refreshing to see that those 800, 1,800 hours they require of training don't yeah. go to West in Michigan when you can just Google it, apparently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's about the end of our show. <laughs> that's about the end of our show. We're just about out of time. But uh, thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. And by the way, too, we also uh, like to interview people who have experiences with their businesses or being shut down or affected. Or if you're a Cal Exeter, we'd love to hear from you, too. Uh, send your questions uh, to that uh, counterpoint at libertarian counterpoint.com.